Hey everyone, uh, we're going to be going in just about a minute. I uh, just see uh, people still filtering in, so we'll give everyone some time. Okay, one o'clock. Uh, I am just gonna get started with a, a couple quick points, a uh, bit of housekeeping. So uh, we're gonna be doing our live Q&A at the end of the webinar. So please feel free to submit your questions in the uh, text box or the, the questions drop down on your webinar control panel. Uh, all questions will be addressed anonymous, anonymously and we're gonna try and get to as many as we can uh, before the hour runs out. We don't get your question we will follow up uh, via email so don't worry about that um quick disclaimer all information discussed in this webinar is for your educational purposes only it should not be applied directly to the administration of any particular file or claim this webinar is being recorded uh, and we'll be posting it on our website linkedin and youtube pages so please feel free to share them with your colleagues uh, if you'd like this webinar is accredited in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and it's eligible for hours in British Columbia. We're going to be sending everyone a completion certificate uh, as soon as we can, uh, probably uh, next week, uh, since we're not waiting on uh, any accreditation. Uh, and just a, a quick reminder for everyone, uh, this is a repeat webinar. Uh, so if you have, if you did submit this webinar for uh, continuing education hours last year, uh, just check with your 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 province uh, to see if you are allowed to use it again. I think I think you have to wait three years, uh, but uh, I'm not the expert. Uh, okay, Paul. Oh, and sorry, last thing, but you can keep it here. If if you are experiencing any technical difficulties. Uh, you can use that questions drop down or you can email webinar at origin and cause.com. Okay, so here we go. Uh, today we're doing fit to burst frozen pipes and water damage claims. Uh, this is with uh, Dina Mate and Paul Amati. So, like I said, this is a reprisal of a webinar we did back in November uh, before the onset of winter. We thought that now that we're sort of at the tail end of the season, and some of you have received these types of claims, a refresher might be beneficial. So it's gonna be very similar. However, uh, this time we do have Paul joining us. Uh, Paul is one of our materials engineers. Uh, he's located in Vancouver, uh, where they've uh, had a, a winter of extremes this year, including a record low in mid-January of minus 13. Uh, I can kind of sense people in Edmonton rolling their eyes at the idea of a, a low of minus 13, but uh, as Paul will touch on, uh, it's the unusualness of the temperature that's critical to these freezing claims. Uh, you know, you can't prevent what you're not prepared for. Uh, so uh, our presenter today, Dina Mate, who has 30 plus years of industry and academic experience, uh, which includes uh, over 2,000 forensic investigations. His mechanical and materials engineering specialties are failure analysis, product liability, plumbing systems and components failures, oil spills, corrosion, metallurgical and fractography investigations, insurance fraud investigations, and personal injuries. Uh, and like I mentioned, we also have Paul Amati, who's a licensed professional engineer in BC and Alberta. Uh, he is a mechanical and materials engineer specializing in forensic failure analysis, which includes plumbing systems and components failures, corrosion-related failures, environmental degradation, 
HVAC systems failures, personal injuries, product liability, and metallurgical and fractography investigations. Uh, and now I'm going to hand things over to Paul, and he's going to get us started. Thank you, Mark, for that great intro. So today we're going to dive into an interesting aspect of physics that affects us all, especially during the cold winter months, and that's the freezing of water. So water is a substance that's vital for our everyday lives, but its unique properties are often overlooked. And at the core of these properties is the freezing point of water, which is about zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is the critical temperature where water transforms from a liquid to a solid. But this transformation isn't just a change in form. It's accompanied by this very interesting increase in volume, which can be as much as 9%. And here's where it gets really interesting. And it's, it's not just the mechanical expansion of water that can cause a pipe to burst. It's often the pressure buildup downstream of that that leads to that event. So if you can imagine water confined inside of a pipe during the cold winter, as it freezes and expands, the pressure inside the pipe can increase up to 132 megapascals or about 19,142 pounds per square inch. And to really put that into perspective for you, that's comparable to the force exerted by a large elephant standing on top of a postage stamp. So it's an immense amount of pressure and it's often more than what any pipe could be designed to handle. And we often think of freezing in a very straightforward way. Water gets cold, water turns into ice. But there's really more to the story. Did you know that running water has a much harder time freezing than still water does? And this is why you might see rivers flowing in cold temperatures where you'd expect them to be frozen over already. And, and a really counterintuitive phenomenon is that under certain circumstances, warm water can actually freeze faster than cold water. And this is known as the Pemba effect. And it's, it's been a puzzling issue for scientists for decades now. But for a more practical example, let's think about a typical four bedroom house at a nice cozy 22 degrees Celsius. If the heating fails during a cold snap, it can take around 12 hours for the inside to reach freezing temperatures. But it's important to note that the temperatures aren't going to drop uniformly across the entire house. And this is because different insulation levels around the home and air currents. And when we think about pipes bursting in cold weather, it's, it's really logical to assume that it happens where the ice forms, but that's not always the case the burst can actually occur some distances away from the ice, and this is because of the change in water pressure. And this actually leads us to a useful application of controlled freezing, um, pipe freezing or pipe sealing. And so this technique involves intentionally freezing water inside of a pipe to form a solid plug. And this temporary ice plug can act as a type of isolation point, allowing for repairs, without needing to drain the entire system. So it's kind of a brilliant solution that harnesses the properties of water in its solid form to solve a practical problem. But let's, let's turn our attention to different scenarios that can lead to freezing within a home. Now, imagine it's a chilly winter day, you come home and you find a draft. This could be because the doors or the windows were left open by accident, which allows the warmth to escape and the cold to invade. It's simple, but it's often overlooked. And in a similar way, an open garage door is like an invitation for the cold to enter a space that's usually poorly insulated compared to the rest of the home. And speaking of insulation, so insulation, you can think of it as a warm blanket around your home. If it's shifted in some areas or if it's missing, the cold can penetrate the walls. 
leading to fast decreases in temperature and, and even the potential for frozen pipes. And in these cases, your furnace is really your best friend when it comes to fighting the freeze, so to speak. A malfunction here can be a direct ticket to freeze. Your furnace is its a critical piece of equipment, and it must be maintained to ensure a warm home. And if the furnace becomes starved of oxygen, which, which could even be caused by frost buildup in the air intake, it won't really function as intended. And it can be affected by a lot of other issues, such as a flood caused by a failed plumbing component in your home, or even a power outage, especially in the winter, which can disable your heating system, and that leads to a really quick temperature drop. Um, what about the thermostat? Uh, if it's turned off or if it's set too low, it won't signal your furnace to generate heat. Uh, even depleted batteries in your thermostat could render it unoperational or inoperative. And this, again, leaves your home vulnerable to dropping temperatures. And uh, lastly here, a really tangible sign of freezing is when you go to turn on your tap and you find only a trickle or, or nothing at all coming. This is a clear indicator that pipes are frozen somewhere in the system. But um, you know, as we continue to dive in here into the complex freezing problems, it's, it's important to ask the right questions to diagnose issues and to prevent future occurrences. Um, so let's talk about some of these. Firstly, is the occupancy status. It can play an important role. Was the residence occupied at the time of the freeze or was it left unattended? And an, un an unoccupied space may not have the necessary heating and monitoring to prevent freezing. If the property was unoccupied because the owners were away, it's important to know the duration of, of the absence. The longer the house is left without supervision, the higher the risk of freezing issues. Um, and let's not forget about the water supply. Was it turned off? Was it left on? Even the frequency the frequency of house checks during cold periods also matter. How often was the property inspected? Um, regular checks can catch early signs of freezing before they lead to a flood. The thermostat setting is another important factor. Was What was the temperature set at? Incorrect settings can lead to insufficient heating, which leads to freezing. Um, but in the in the unfortunate event of a flood, Identifying who discovered it and what immediate measures were taken is important for assessing the response and how effective it might have been. And understanding the extent of the damage is also key. How many leak locations were found? Multiple leaks are often an indication of freezing related issues. Maintenance records are also critical, such as the last furnace inspection, which can provide insights into whether an equipment failure might have contributed to the freeze. And in cases where external factors might be at play, we should check if there was ice buildup or snow that might be blocking the furnace's air intake, which can you know, impede the, the system's functionality. So in the, in the aftermath, so to speak, of a freezing event, um, which, has, which has led to lead, excuse me, which has led to leaks or damage in the property. Precise action and careful documentation are key. And let's just take a moment to walk through the steps as, as well as what things to avoid to ensure a thorough assessment of the situation. First and foremost, it's essential to document the leak locations. Detailing the specific sites of the leaks gives us more information than simply noting the extent of the damage. And this allows for a more targeted approach in understanding the failure points in the system. And next, we can turn our attention to the control systems. So we want to document the settings and the conditions of the thermostat, the furnace, or any other component that may have been involved in the leak. 
And this information is vital for a forensic engineer to understand the circumstances that might have led to the freeze. Um, speaking of which, enlisting a forensic engineer is an important step. And these are specialists who will analyze the failure in detail and provide expert insights into the cause and the sequence of the events leading up to the damage. You should also ensure that you have your utility bills on hand and these documents can reveal any usage patterns that may correlate with the freeze, such as a drop in heating consumption. Uh, it's also important to review historical weather conditions for the area leading up to the loss. Resources like AccuWeather can provide um, past weather data that might be instrumental in understanding the internal factors that contributed to the freezing. But now let's talk about what not to do. It's important not to remove or alter the thermostat, the furnace, or any other components that were part of the system when the leak occurred. Any change in these areas can, can obscure the findings of the forensic investigation. And in a similar way, don't dispose of any of the pipe sections or any components that were involved in the leak. These are all pieces of the puzzle that are important for a complete forensic analysis. And you know, by following these do's and don'ts, you can ensure that you've preserved the integrity of the scene for a thorough investigation, which paves the way for a clear understanding of the events and for developing strategies to prevent future occurrences. And before I hand it over to my colleague Dinu, like Mark said, I wanted to talk about the change in weather patterns in Vancouver, which is where I live. So historically, Vancouver is known for its mild winters, and this is courtesy of the Pacific Northwest climate. The city's infrastructure, from residential plumbing to water systems, they've all been designed with this type of temperature in mind. And recent trends are really painting a different picture. In the past few years, we've noticed a rise in unexpected cold snaps. But what does this mean for Vancouver? Well, our buildings, our homes, these aren't typically fortified for severe freezes. And we're now facing these new challenges. And the consequences are significant. There's property damage from burst pipes and, and the ensuing water damage. These are all on the rise, which lead to expensive repairs and insurance claims. You know, like Mark said, one week in, in mid-January, we had temperature drops to about negative 13 degrees, which is absolutely unexpected for Vancouver. And after that, you know, my phone was ringing off the hook with, with water-related issues. I was, I was actually just checking the forecast right now and it's supposed to snow today, which is very odd. And having said that, without further delay, I wanna hand it over to my respected colleague, Dinu, to continue the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul, and uh, welcome everybody at this uh, webinar. It's our pleasure to discuss this interesting topic, which is called uh, freezing. Uh, our company was involved throughout the years uh, in a large number of uh, freezing related uh, insurance claims. And there is a large variety of uh, such claims. And although they look similar, they are all different. I'm trying to uh, present a few interesting cases. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the time to showcase all of them. Uh, I chose some that I consider interesting and I hope you'll find them as well. As Paul mentioned, uh, it's not always the mechanical expansion of the ice that cause a burst in a piping system, but it's uh, the pressure that builds downstream from the ice plug location. It's like a piston in a syringe. So downstream, uh, the pressure that uh, 
goes up has nowhere to go and eventually it will let go at the weakest location in the plumbing system. Upstream from the ice plug, the pressure will dissipate into the uh, water distribution system and nothing happens. So most of the incidents happen downstream from the ice plug. But uh, there are instances where you can see multiple failures in the same residence. Those pictures that you see on this slide are taken in one house. The owners were away for an extended period of time. Um, they set the thermostat low, and uh, when it was uh, extreme cold, the pipes froze. In this particular case, with so many failures, uh, we can say with certainty that pipes were a solid frozen. It's not the pressure. Here it's the actual ice. Uh, you can see on the upper left corner, uh, a bunch of pipes and the solder joints that separated and burst. Um, I also saw the drain pipe of a sink, the toilet tank of a toilet, the water filtration system in the kitchen, uh, the pipes behind the shower, and an image of the thermostat, which was set at four degrees Celsius, which was not sufficient to ensure a positive temperature during the cold season. Also, it's definitely freezing when you see ice formed on the walls. On this brick wall, uh, you can see ice formed. Uh, again, uh, the homeowners were away for an extended period of time, and the furnace malfunctioned and uh, the temperature dropped, uh, causing freezing and burst of pipes. Uh, let's start with some uh, case studies. And the first one involves a tankless water heater. It failed during the first cold season. On the left image, you can see the copper coils and they have uh, splits uh, in the uh, elbows. Uh, freezing uh, typically causes this type of failures because in this area, the wall of the pipe is the thinnest. So this would be the weakest component, the uh, weakest part of the pipe. And again, when you have multiple splits, you can think of freezing. We attended the site and we examined both inside and outside the building. And we noticed that the, the heater was installed right below the entrance of an exhaust pipe. So the pipe that you see on the right image enters the building and you can see there is no insulation. So this was an invite and a pathway for cold air to enter. And because cold air is heavier than warm air, once it entered the building, it dropped directly onto the heater, causing it to freeze. So this uh, incident was uh, caused by an installation uh, deficiency. It's not very uncommon to see sprinkler system failures due to freezing. Uh, the Orange pipe that you can see in this image, it's called CPVC and becomes more and more popular in North America. It's a uh, fire resistant and uh, it's easy to install and it's relatively cheap compared to a steel pipe. However, it's not prone to degradation if it's in contact with other materials, but it's also prone to freezing if it's not installed properly. The Applicable code requires that if a, you have to maintain four degrees Celsius uh, where you have sprinkler system uh, pipes running. And if you cannot maintain four degrees Celsius, you either use a dry sprinkler system or if it's a uh, steel pipe, you use a heat tracer. Even the pipe is installed correctly, over time due to various conditions the installation can shift, exposing the pipe to cold air. There are instances like in the right image where there was no insulation at all. You can see through this soft soffit outside uh, the building. So the pipe was not protected in any way uh, from freezing. How you uh, determine that CPVC pipe failed as the result of freezing? Typically the split is branched it's jagged and it runs through several components, not only through the pipe, but it runs through the elbows to tees. So uh, it's uh, a split that extends through several components.
we are all familiar with the failure of solenoid valves because uh, some internal component is made of a material which is not compatible with chlorinated water. However, there are instances where these solenoid valves, although they are inside the house, they fail as the result of freezing. And uh, how you recognize that they failed as the result of freezing is there's the splits again, uh, they are branched and uh, they are in the body of the, uh, the solenoid valve and not necessarily internal and not necessarily in a stress concentrated area. Here are three examples of solenoid valves from a fridge or a dishwasher or washing machine that failed as the result of freezing. I was asked numerous times, how come the solenoid valve froze when it was inside the building and the building was heated? As mentioned uh, before, it's the pressure buildup that caused this to happen. It's not necessarily that you have ice inside the valve, but the pressure, which can go up to 20,000 PSI, as Paul said, can cause this uh, type of damage uh, easily. So in this particular case, it's not about a manufacturing deficiency. Uh, or an installation issue, it's uh, about freezing. And when we do those examinations, we always check the weather conditions uh, for at least a week prior to the date of the loss. And by analyzing the data and looking at the available evidence, we conclude that it was uh, freezing. This uh, example is about uh, frost-free valve. Uh, this valve uh, does exactly the same thing that the name implies. Uh, it ensures a frost-free uh, condition. How it works, uh, the stem extends inside the building. So uh, the water stop is actually inside the building uh, in a heated space. It's not near the outside wall where it could freeze easily. So it's a very smart design. However, these valves should be installed correctly. Otherwise, they will uh, act as opposite. Those valves need to be sloped downwards such that the water that's accumulated in, inside will be evacuated naturally by gravity. If the valve is installed the other way around, sloped towards the building, then the slope will prevent the water to be evacuated and stagnant water will stay inside the pipe and eventually it will freeze. It's not only a copper pipe or a plastic pipe that can freeze. Uh, we have uh, deal with instances where braided hoses under sinks uh, failed. Uh, usually those braided hoses failed as the result of corrosion because they are exposed to uh, an environment which contains harmful chemicals originating from household uh, cleaning uh, compounds. If you have a uh, Windex, for example, it contains ammonia. Ammonia is not friends with brass alloys. You have Clorox. Uh, Clorox contains, as the name implies, chlorine, and chlorine is not a good friend with stainless steel. In this particular case, one of the water supply lines to the sink, to the faucet, was effectively uh, ejected from, from the crimp. You can see on the right side, this is intact. You still have the uh, the nut and the crimp. On the left side, uh, the hose was effectively uh, pulled out from, from the crimp. Looking under the microscope, I did not see a corrosion on the braids as one would expect. And this is not typical for a corrosion type of failure. When you have a corrosion failure of braided hoses, you have inner hose inner polymeric has hose exposed and it has a longitudinal split, which was not the case here. I took some of the braids and uh, examined them under a more powerful microscope and I saw evidence of ductile overload, meaning in other words that it was forcefully pulled out. By uh, analyzing the weather conditions before the incident, the occupancy of the house, I concluded that this failure was the result of freezing. Freezing can occur in industrial uh, environments as well, not only in residential homes. This is an example of a 
plumbing si a section of a plumbing system which was uh, uh, co connected with uh, so-called vic victolic couplings. These couplings are made for more than 100 years and uh, they are not known to fail as the result of manufacturing deficiency. The production is so controlled that the manufacturer will be able to tell you which foundry those cast iron couplings were made. Their problem is if they are installed incorrect, uh, the groove in the pipe is not uh, deep enough, uh, the gasket is pinched, and there are several other uh, conditions that can lead to their failure. But also, they are subjected to failure due to freezing. These couplings are designed to take a lot of pressure, about 4,000 PSI, which you don't encounter in any plumbing system under normal condition. You see the lower coupling has a, a fracture in the in the one of the halves. You can see it here. So it fractured and it separated from uh, the associated pipe, causing water to to burst. We uh, looked at the coupling. We did not see any manufacturing defect, any cast deficiency. The chemistry was right, and uh, we determined that uh, it failed as the result of freezing. It must be said that uh, in brittle material like uh, cast iron or uh, soft materials, uh, the fracture surface is hard to interpret because Due to the nature of the material, uh, the traces left by the failure are not always uh, visible. It's very important to have uh, your furnace checked. I would recommend to have the furnace checked by a specialized technician before the onset of cold season. Uh, that gives you some sort of uh, confidence that you will go through the winter and without any problems. In this particular case, the homeowner wanted her, her furnace to be inspected and uh, maintained. During the process, the technician broke one of the fittings. You can see it here and you can see it on the right side at the uh, higher magnification. This fitting was uh, relevant for the functionality of the furnace. And because the furnace was altered, it stopped working during cold season and the entire home froze. So in this particular case, the house was occupied, uh, a thermostat was set at the right temperature. It was just uh, that the technician uh, did a poor job and he altered the furnace, which prevented it uh, from uh, working as intended. It's not always that a plumbing system fail as the result of freezing. Uh, residential fuel oil systems are also prone to freezing if they're not properly maintained. You can see here the front of an oil tank, the bottom of an oil tank, and the uh, inline filter. And what you see under the yellow cap is actually a block of ice. The actual canister of the filter is on the left side of, of the image. The applicable code and the manufacture of the filters requires that the filters to be checked every year, preferably before the onset of cold season. And where there is water in the filter, it needs to be evacuated. Water inside an oil tank forms as the result of condensation, or it can enter due to rain or snow mostly is because of condensation because the tanks are not always full and during summertime uh, condensation form and water being heavier than oil accumulates at the bottom and when the furnace starts to call for oil the first to come out of the tank is water and it accumulates in the oil filter and if it's not evacuated before the onset of cold season it can easily freeze like in this uh, instance. Coming back to uh, plumbing systems, uh, probably you are familiar with those uh, versatile 
connectors called the uh, uh, pushing style connectors. They are very uh, versatile, as I said. Uh, they are on the market for about 10 years. And as far as we know, they did not fail as the result of uh, freezing uh, of a manufacturing deficiency. In this particular case, uh, you look at one uh, such connector, which has the collette broken, uh, the seal broken, and the body exhibiting a fracture. This type of failure is not typical for an installation issue. It's not typical for a manufacturing deficiency. Uh, because there are so many comp internal components that failed, it was not only one. And again, uh, checking the weather conditions and the occupancy of the house, it was determined that the failure was the result of freezing. In the first slide that I presented, I showed you numerous components that fail in a house. When freezing occurs, it's not necessarily there are multiple failures, it could be only one. And uh, when there is only one, there is only the question if something else other than freezing occur. But with thorough examination and uh, data analysis, we can uh, differentiate between freezing and other uh, failure mode. Toilet connectors. Uh, we all know those toilet connectors fail as the result of creep due to improper selection of material by the manufacturer and due to an improper design. However, um, in this particular case, the toilet connector failed as the result of freezing. The water supply line, the braided hose, is filled with water all the time. And uh, it's stagnant water because the toilet is not used. So we were called in uh, to check the toilet connector. I said, oh, it's another toilet connector that failed as the result of freezing. Well, uh, when you have a toilet connector that failed as the result of creep, the fracture surface has specific characteristics to help identify the failure mechanism. On this particular case, I look at the fracture surface of this coupling, and I saw the appearance is totally different than on the ones that failed as the result of creep. Uh, you can see a lot of ductility and uh, the features on the fracture surface clearly uh, said that this was overloaded. Again, uh, we determined it was freezing based on the, the fact that the coupling failed as the result of ductile overload, the fact the house was not occupied. Oftentimes, it's hard to uh, pinpoint exactly the thermostat uh, because after the incident, usually the thermostat is fixed and the settings are readjusted. It must be said that for certain thermostats, our company is capable to read the history. So even after a freezing incident, the homeowner or the contractor crank up the thermostat, uh, depending on the model, we might be able to look into history and say, okay, on this day, it was set up at this uh, temperature. Uh, this is a very interesting case. It, it involves uh, the lab of the university. You can see uh, a lot of benches and a lot of uh, faucets. And it was during the cold season when the, the management, the dean, <laughs> decided to change the windows. And uh, it was a poor choice, in, uh, <laughs> in my opinion. First of all, there were minus 25 to minus 30 degrees Celsius outside. And second, uh, although the students were on vacation during that time, uh, they did not shut off the water uh, to those benches. So when the windows were replaced for a short period of time, there was no insulation between the frame and the wall. So there was only some part. It's not visible in this picture, but that's how they decided to protect the lab from freezing by putting some tarp, which is totally uh, inadequate for this purpose. So when there was so cold outside, the water was running, was in the pipes. Uh, it was just a matter of time until one of the pipes will burst. 
and it happened at this t under one of the bench you can see this opening which is typical for uh, freezing um, the window installer and the faculty uh, claimed that it was a manufacturing def deficiency at this t and this caused the burst we removed the t we took it to our lab we looked under the microscope and it was clearly that uh, it has no manufacturing deficiency there were no porosity no inclusions um, the microstructure was uh, solid uh, no no defects and the fracture surface indicated clearly that it was ductile overload and because the lab uh, the students were on vacation the lab was not used uh, there was no reason to believe that it was a water hammer or something else that could cause the pressure increase and it was uh, again, uh, freezing. This is a section of a sprinkler system in a parking lot downtown Toronto. Uh, a few years ago, uh, it was very cold outside, and uh, the elbow of this sprinkler system froze. You can see the ice coming out of the, the opening. This is solid cast iron and it can take a lot of pressure. But with the ice build up, uh, it, it gave way. So it was very cold and it was a power outage. So the, the system was not working, uh, the heat tracing was not working, there was no backup. So there were favorable conditions for uh, uh, freezing to occur. Uh, the lesson learned from this incident, it was that the management should have a backup system to prevent uh, such inc incidents to occur when you have both freezing and uh, power outage simultaneously. As I mentioned earlier, in uh, spaces where you cannot maintain four degrees Celsius, the sprinkler system of choice should be a dry sprinkler system. And a dry sprinkler system is exactly what the name says, dry. So up from the valve, the pipe is free of water to prevent freezing. However, this system needs to be uh, tested and maintained. The pipes should be sloped towards so-called low drain points. And before the onset of cold season, those low drain points need to be drained. The system is flushed and tested. So during this testing, there is water running through the pipe. However, it needs to be evacuated in order to prevent freezing. Um, typical of freezing in those pipes are the longitudinal splits, as you can see on the top picture and the bottom picture here. There are two different pipes from two different uh, locations, but uh, the appearance of the openings is uh, quite similar. In this particular case, it's uh, a larger opening versus on uh, top pipe. Looking inside the pipe, you can see uh, evidence of corrosion. So this was clear evidence that stagnant water was present uh, inside the pipe. Like in uh, oil tanks, uh, water is not only from uh, testing the pipe, but it's also formed as the result of condensation. So that's why uh, these systems are needed to be a uh, drain of water before the onset of cold season. If this is not happening, stagnant water will freeze. And as Paul mentioned, it expands 9% uh, by volume, which is significant. And that causes this type of uh, failures. This is another interesting case involving a, a warehouse. Uh, This warehouse is, was used to store uh, food and uh, it was a kit with those uh, vents. Those gray window-like features are actually vents and there are some uh, openings which are controlled uh, and when there is a certain temperature uh, reached, then uh, they close, preventing cold air to enter and when the temperature goes above that limit, they open again, allowing ventilation, natural ventilation. 
The sprinkler system of this warehouse failed, and there were several components like this one on the right side image, uh, which fractured completely. As mentioned earlier, because there were several components that failed, and under the circumstances, cold weather, uh, we were thinking of freezing. But what could have caused freezing to occur? So our investigation revealed that those louvers did not close when the temperature dropped be below the set temperature. And uh, this was not related to the sprinkler system. It was related to the control board of these louvers. Our electrical engineers determined that was a fault into that board and this prevented these windows to close when the temperature was sub-zero. We've seen uh, numerous instances where there are cold air spots in a building. Uh, this is a commercial building, uh, actually it's a dentist office, and the building was uh, covered on the outside with some aluminum panels uh, for cosmetics. During uh, the first winter, the water pipes that run uh, behind the panels froze. Uh, there were five or six sections, different sections that failed as the result of freezing. When I attended the site and I looked at the building, I saw that the insulation between two the ascent panels was ensured by duct tape, which is totally inadequate. On the lower image, if you see here uh, those light spots, this is actually the exterior of the building, the outside. There was no insulation whatsoever, and the insulation that was existing was not properly uh, in installed. Going outside the building, uh, I could see that the seal between uh, the two panels uh, was not properly uh, in, in, in place, allowing cold air to, to enter. So uh, it was nothing wrong with the design of panels, but it was wrong with the construction of the building. You don't uh, use duct tape as an insulator, and it's a good idea to uh, put the insulation throughout the entire piping system to prevent freezing. If you have a gap, uh, that gap uh, invites cold air. This was a straightforward case. Uh, the thermostat was not sending any signal to the fur to the furnace because there was no battery to to power it. Speaking of uh, thermostats, uh, it's a good idea to change the batteries once a year, preferably before the onset of cold season. A lot of people are neglecting this, and uh, they leave the batteries for two or three years. And also nowadays there are batteries that can last long. Uh, they eventually will be depleted, and if it happens during the cold season, then uh, uh, you create favorable conditions for your home to freeze. And the last case study that I wanted to present is quite interesting. Uh, what are you looking at uh, is a film studio in Mississauga, and during a, a winter. Pipes froze and they flooded the basement. You can see here the water level. It, it was up to the chest. And the claim was quite substantial because in the basement there was a lot of equipment necessary for the studio to, to operate. So we were called in to determine what happened. Uh, it was very interesting because uh, during that time, uh, some movie company was shooting a movie about Chernobyl. And what you can see on the right side image, it's actually a recreation of some uh, uh, a room in, a, uh, in, in Chernobyl. The problem for us was we did not know which is the real pipe and which is the prop, because there were so many props there for, for the movie it was really, really hard to identify the actual pipe uh, and differentiate it from the, the props. At the end of the day, um, we, we discovered that uh, 
the entire building was uh, split into several sections and one section was actually uh, a shop and uh, the owner of the shop wanted to prevent it, people from stealing uh, tools so he closed the door and in the same time he closed the boiler which was uh, ensuring the heat to the building uh, and as the result some of the pipes froze and uh, that led to this uh, disaster. Uh, before the end of our presentation I would like to present a few tips to prevent freezing from occur occurring. Best prevention is uh, make sure that the heat source in your house never stops. Allow warm air to circulate throughout the entire house. Leave the, the doors inside uh, uh, open. Uh, check doors and windows for cracks. Uh, see if there is a cold air coming uh, around the frame or under the window and uh, try to block it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, insulate the pipes. Uh, there are readily available uh, foam-like uh, insulators for pipes are easy to install, but make sure there are no gaps. So make sure uh, that the entire pipe is uh, insulated, especially um, in, in the kitchen, uh, because uh, in most kitchens, the pipes are running uh, inside uh, the exterior wall and they're uh, exposed to low temperature and also try to insulate the pipe runs in the basement. Oftentimes, there is cold air coming uh, under the sinks uh, because of the plumbing fixtures. Uh, check if there is cold air coming through uh, that space and try to, to, to block it by adding uh, in insulation. A lot of people who are going away on vacation during winter time, they turn off the heat uh, completely. Uh, I would not do it. I would keep the heat uh, running and uh, that will ensure a positive temperature inside the house. Quite interesting and uh, unexpected is uh, the dryer. The dryer communicates with the exterior and uh, if you open the dryer during cold season you will feel cold air coming. So don't leave the dryer door open during cold season because you are inviting cold air to come into your house. Um, garden hoses, uh, it's a good idea to uh, unhook the hoses and shut off the water. Uh, make sure the lawn irrigation and recreation water sources like hot tubs are uh, drained and uh, dry. If it's extremely cold outside, let the water trickle because as Paul mentioned, running water doesn't freeze. So even the tiniest trickle flow uh, of water will prevent freezing from occurring. Before uh, you go on vacation during uh, cold season, it's a very good idea to drain the system. And uh, you turn off the main valve in the basement and then uh, you open the tap at the sink in the basement, also the highest tap at the top floor. So the water will be evacuated and uh, you, you need to open the top tap to allow air and that will uh, ease the draining of the system. And this will also help when you come back and restore the water. If the system is open, and you open the water, uh, you won't have the water hammer. A water hammer is a spike in the pressure which can uh, cause severe damage to your plumbing system. So if the system is open to the air, uh, the pressure will dissipate and you will not have any uh, issues uh, with uh, damage. When you have a frozen pipe, um, it's hard to detect where the ice plug or ice plugs form. However, uh, the most uh, prone area for failure are the pipes uh, in, in the kitchen. A hot hair dryer can help thaw the, the, the pipes if you suspect freezing. Uh, when you turn off the 
on the tap and you don't have water coming and it's cold outside, you can say, okay, it's uh, freezing. But a hot hair dryer can help thaw the pipes, uh, leave the tap open so the pressure is uh, released and that will prevent damage to the plumbing system. Make sure the thermostat is working, as I mentioned earlier, uh, make sure the batteries are uh, working. Uh, my suggestion is to set the thermostat not below 12 degrees Celsius. But again, this depends from house to house because the house homes are varying in sizes. Uh, they have different insulation, uh, different windows, uh, different cold air spots. Uh, the idea is to maintain the temperature uh, positive throughout the entire house. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the temperature is not uniform throughout the entire house. There are some corners where the temperature is lower than uh, in the hallway because the thermostat is recording the temperature at that location. It does not record the temperature at the very end in the, in the basement. So if you ensure, let's say, 12 degrees Celsius in the hallway, you might have six in the basements. If you set the thermostat at six in the hallway, you might have freezing in the basement. So uh, you have to use your judgment. There is no set rule. The idea is to keep the heat on and uh, to such a setting that the uh, temperature is positive throughout the entire house. It's very important to have someone checking the house regularly. Uh, the interval of time depends from insurance company to insurance company. Uh, some require somebody to check your house every 48 hours, some 72 hours, others once a week. Uh, it uh, depends. Before going on vacation, make sure the furnace is working. You have no control if the furnace fails. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have control on that. It happened to me actually, and I was at home. So the furnace stopped working. Luckily I was here because if I was away, I would have a freezing condition in my house. And again, uh, make sure that it's uh, warm enough throughout the, the entire house. This concludes our presentation. We thank you for participating. I hope you find this interesting. And uh, if you have any question for us, we'll be more than happy to, to answer. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Dinu. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, we do have some questions already, uh, so let's get to those uh, quickly because, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're short on time. So, uh, first question: <clears throat> Does uh, external temperature affect inside freezing time? Uh, leave that open to Paul or Dinu. Paul, you're muted, by the way. I'm not sure if I'll uh, <laughs> jump in. It. Yes. Uh... Freezing will occur much faster if you have 40 degrees, minus 40 degrees outside versus minus 10. Yeah, that's Newton law of cooling. The temperature difference is the driving force for the heat transfer. Okay, fantastic. That was easy. Um, if a pipe freezes but doesn't burst, does it make it more susceptible to failure in the future? That's a very good question. Um, if a pipe uh, freezes, it's subjected to pressure. So, uh, although uh, copper is quite uh, re resistant, if it did not fail as the result of pressure buildup of ice uh, impingement, uh, it will be weakened to some extent. Okay. Uh, if you discover pipes frozen, what are the best steps to resolve? Um, I'm not sure if that's from the homeowner's perspective or uh, uh, insurance perspective, like an adjuster. From the homeowner's perspective, if you suspect your pipes are frozen, open the taps. That will release the pressure. Uh, it, it's hard to locate the place of the ice plug. Uh, it, it's a good idea where you have exposed pipe, especially under the sink, to run a, a hair dryer. That will thaw the pipe. But it's important to open the taps because <coughs> if it's not a mechanical expansion that caused uh, failure, 
it will be pressure. And the first thing you want to do is to release that pressure. Okay. Uh, you mentioned 12 hours. Uh, it would take to for uh, a four-bedroom home to uh, reach freezing conditions. Uh, what's the outside temperature you're referring to? Uh, again, this is just an example. Uh, it, it, it's hard to quantify uh, exactly the, the time uh, because there are so many variables and factors involved, uh, including the outside temperature, uh, how good the house is uh, insulated, and a few other parameters. I, I gave an example uh, based on uh, a real case uh, where we actually determined that it took 12 hours for that home to go from 22 to minus uh, degrees. But again, it varies from home to home and it depends on the outside conditions. Uh, okay. Um, outside hot tubs, most common failures. Uh, Paul, Dean, have you seen any uh, hot tub issues? Uh, yes, I've seen a few and uh, cause was they were not drained okay was that so it was that they were off and not drained yeah yeah, yeah. they were not in use okay perfect uh okay wow, i've got a lot of questions <laughs> uh when you're away on vacation and turn off the main water and bleed the pipes what is the best way to turn the water back on to avoid air in the pipes and water hammer Leave both uh, taps open, the top and the bottom one, and slowly turn on the valve. Don't turn it all of a sudden. Just slowly open it. When you say top and bottom, you're referring to you know uh, something upstairs and something in the basement. Yes, the 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 tap at the highest point in the building, which would be probably the second floor bathroom. Okay, fantastic. Um. Is electric heat tape a viable option over insulation to prevent freezing? For electric heat tape, not electrical. I have to be honest, I don't know the answer to these questions. Paul, do you have uh, anything to say? Uh, no, I'm on the same boat as you. Electric heat tape yeah. on over on top of insulation? Uh, viable option. Over in, yeah, if you want to, uh, if you want to clarify, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can. Uh, maybe we'll get back to you uh, via email on that one. Um, okay. Does the thermostat detect temperature at one specific point in the house or throughout the house, especially the basement? It's just kind of where it's yeah. called, where, where the thermocouple is. Yeah. So where, yeah, where your thermostat is located. Um, I think you can get. Uh, Temperature sensors for, uh, for certain thermosets now, and you can place them throughout the home. I know for Ecobee, uh, they have these yeah. available. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do here's a couple sort of related. Uh, you mentioned the thermostat being set too low in some cases. Uh, what would be the threshold, uh, or does it depend on other factors such as insulation? Uh, and then one person asked specifically if a sleeping temperature of 16 degrees. Uh, is okay to prevent pipes bursting? Nobody can guarantee your pipes will not freeze. And uh, setting the thermostat temperature uh, again depends on the house. Um, it's not the same for uh, every house. Uh, some homes have uh, cold air spots uh, compared to others. In some instances, you can set the thermostat to say, let's say, 12 degrees Celsius, and you will be fine. And in other instances, you can set up the thermostat at 12, and you will encounter freezing. Um, so uh, again, uh, it's about uh, your own uh, uh, judgment. I cannot offer a specific number. Set the thermostat to 16, and it will be fine because it would not be right. Okay. Um, what do you mean by do not leave the door open on your dryer? Are you talking about the dryer machine? Yes. Of the, yes. Yeah. So the, yeah, the actual, the door of the machine. Yes. Yeah. So when you go home, 
open it and you will feel cold air come. Well, it's not very cold in Mississauga now, but uh, you, you will feel uh, cold air coming. A, a lot of people leave the door open to prevent, uh, I don't know, mold or something to, to form inside. That's nothing wrong doing this during summertime, but during cold season, it's a good idea to keep that door open, uh, closed all the time, sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> how do you ensure the basement is heated properly to prevent freezing since heat rises? Uh, Paul Ardino? Well, that's an interesting question, but you still yeah, have to consider that when you're thinking, yeah. <laughs> heating an area, it's not just the air that's heated, right? The objects and the walls, they all have a thermal mass. They heat up as well. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if anyone's like to add anything to that. I mean, my, my furnace is in the basement, so I find that uh, the basement actually stays somewhat warmer than uh, other floors in the winter because it's uh, closer to the furnace. Uh, are we, let's see, here is, we got, oof, we're over. Um, so, uh, there are a few more questions, but, uh, I don't want to keep everyone uh, too long past the appointed time. So, uh, I'll just say thank you to Paul and Dinu. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, and then the rest of these questions, we'll get back to everyone uh, via email. So, uh, yeah, thank you again. Have a good day. Thanks, Mark. Thank Thanks everyone. Uh, and for anyone who joined late, completion certificates will be going out, out next week. Uh, we are accredited in Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan. It's eligible in British Columbia. Okay, thank you very much. Take care.